Hello, I am Bernard Dan, Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. I recently wrote an editorial entitled Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation for Rehabilitating the Brain. Today, I'm having a conversation with Andre Brunoni, who has been designing, studying, and also inspiring clinical applications of this technique, and is currently an invited professor at the University of Munich. Hello, Andre. Thank you for doing this with us. Hi, Bernard. Thank you for inviting me for this podcast. Andre, you're a psychiatrist and you have been a pioneer in non-invasive brain stimulation approaches in depression and a few other disorders. Can you tell us about these approaches? So we have these two main non-invasive brain stimulation techniques. One of them is repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation or, or RTMS. And RTMS is already approved for clinical use in psychiatry, at least for depression. However, for RTMS, there are also some difficulties. So, for instance, the adverse effects, RTMS is very safe, but there is also a small risk for seizure induction. The costs of RTMS are high. Moreover, RTMS devices are relatively large, and they need to be inside the clinical facility. The patient cannot use RTMS at home. RTMS is also not available everywhere. Hence, the idea of developing another non-invasive brain stimulation technique like TDCS. TDCS is transcranial direct current stimulation, and it's a different technique than RTMS. So RTMS induces electromagnetic pulses, generating action potentials and increasing or decreasing cortical instability. The DCS mechanism is a little bit different. So it's a current that's injected in the brain. This current is weak, so it's about 1 to 2 milliamps. It's much lower than the intensity generated by TMS. So the current of TDCS cannot generate action potentials per se. And the disinteraction between the current injected and the cortical activity of this person will lead to the biological effects of TDCS. What can be said about the clinical use of TDCS? So from a clinical perspective, TDCS is interesting because of being a relatively cheap device, especially compared to TMS. TDCS devices are also portable, so they could be theoretically used at home. And also, they are relatively easier to use than TMS device. Even patients or caregivers could use TDCS. It's not necessary that a physician apply TDCS. So this is very appealing from a clinical perspective. And I also would like to mention that TDCS has not been reported to have adverse effects such as seizures. So it would be even safer than RTMS. What are the clinical effects that can be obtained? Most of my work has been researching TDCS as a treatment for depression. We could find that TDCS is superior to placebo in randomized clinical trials. So it's not yet ready to be used as a substitute for antidepressant drugs because it's inferior to a standard pharmacological treatment. However, being superior to placebo allows us to use it or to consider using it in special situations where antidepressant drugs cannot be used. In which other psychiatric conditions could TDCS be interesting? There are promising findings showing that TDCS can decrease the frequency of auditory hallucinations in schizophrenia, and there are also trials showing that TDCS can improve negative symptoms in schizophrenia. And very preliminary findings, but suggesting that TDCS can reduce craving to tobacco and cocaine. Are there any sound results in neurology? In the field of neurology, we have many studies using TDCS as a treatment for pain and for stroke. Different pain conditions have been investigated, such as fibromyalgia or migraine, variety of pain conditions. And for stroke, we also have different lines of investigation according to the different uh, symptoms of stroke. So we have TDCS being investigated in the context of motor rehabilitation, also for language improvement, for patients who present aphasia or dysphagia after the stroke, and also for other conditions related to stroke causes stroke depression, for instance, and others. Is there also a potential for non-medical applications of TDCS? We were discussing TDCS has also been used as a cognitive enhancement tool. 
in this type of study, the CS is applied usually over the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex or prefrontal cortical areas with the aim to improve the performance on tasks really related to working memory or to other cognitive tasks. Can TDCS impair cognitive function in healthy volunteers? This is actually a very interesting question because although most studies show that this has improved cognitive tasks, there are also some studies showing that it can impair. So, for instance, one recent study showed that active TDCS versus shun impaired the acquisition of tasks related to fluid intelligence. And we also have some studies showing that there is a balance between the cognitive tasks that are improved and the cognitive tasks that are impaired. So it seems that it can have different effects for the same protocol of stimulation. And also, I suppose, different results with different stimulation protocols. Yes, that's also true. So when we talk about the DCS, it seems that we are talking about just one thing, but in fact, we can use different protocols in terms of polarities. We can do stimulation for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We can use different current intensities, and also we can put the electrodes in very different brain areas. Different protocols can lead to very different effects. Inspired by those results, we would be tempted to explore the potential benefit of TDCS in children with developing